And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. One of the games that we have enjoyed as a family is a la carte. This is a game in which you uh, season up a dish, cook, put food in. You know, it's just a fun game that you can play in that regard. So now we have the expansion, a la carte dessert, which is really a terrible name because there's no dessert in this thing. I don't even know why it's called that. I guess they, they had to think of some cool thematic name uh, so that it would uh, work together with the theme of the food. But what this does is it essentially adds a fifth player and adds a few new mechanics to the game. Let's look at them. The first thing the expansion adds is everything you need for a fifth player. And that's actually a good thing in this case. I mean, the game might be a little bit longer with five players, but for the most part, you know, having more of the equipment is nice. So that's one reason to get the expansion. Another reason are these menu cards. At the beginning of the game, players will draw three of these menu cards. And these will show things that you need to get during the game. You're going to keep one of them. So let's say I keep this one. That means I need to successfully cook a red dish, a blue dish, and get one star. And if I do so by the end of the game, I'll get five points. Now these aren't so difficult to do, to accomplish, especially since you draw three of them. You'll be able to likely complete them. I guess if anything else, it gives you focus on what you're trying to do over the course of the game. Another thing the game adds are a new set of dishes. These are white dishes with the same absolutely disgusting food on them. But these dishes are interesting because they all require salt. Now, none of the other dishes have required salt up to this point. In fact, salt is usually just a bad thing. But these require salt. Now, that's interesting because, you know, getting salt isn't the easiest thing in the world. You know, there's five salt in here, and you always get it when you don't want it. But what do you do when you do want to get salt? So, yeah, you'll find yourself looking at all the different uh, seasonings and trying to figure out which one has the most salt and trying to get that one. The game also adds another container here, and this one is used, there's five of every color put into it, and there's no salt in it. So if you don't want salt, this is a decent container, but you never know what colors you're going to get. Now it's great when you have one of the uh, uh, recipes that requires a lot of different, and then you sit there and say, okay, for example, let's say I want to cook the calzone capone, and I sit there and say, okay, I need a, a red, black, and a green, well this is a pretty good chance, but I might get yellows. But what I usually end up doing is I'll sprinkle this one, let's say that a green falls out. At that point, I'll switch out and move over to the black or the red seasonings and start using them. So it, it, it's an interesting addition. It's not overpowered and fun for the game. And there's some new coffee mugs that are added, both really powerful. I like this one. This lets you take a spice out of your, out of your uh, dish. So that can give you a star, get rid of salt. Very handy to have, although it seems like every time I get it, I need to get rid of two spices. And then this one lets you go to the trash can and take a recipe that had been thrown there earlier and try to make that recipe rather than taking one off the table. With five players, this can come in especially handy. So that's what's found in this expansion. Well, there you have it. I mean, I would have been interested in this if it just added the fifth player, because that's something that we really could have used, especially in our household, five players with the game. The I really like the extra shaker with five of each kind. That adds some strategy as to which shaker you're going to pick to put it in. And the salt dishes, are they can be easy to do. They can be difficult. The menus, they're okay. They're just not that difficult to accomplish. In fact, I think in the last game we played, everyone accomplished their menu. It was really easy. Everyone was able to pull it off. Um, and the new coffee mugs, I, I like them a lot too. So this is not anything groundbreaking. Okay, I don't know that I would, I mean, get it if you love the game. This is more an addition. And you can chuck the box and everything fits easily in the, in the original game. What do you think of this expansion? I really like it and the way how they added the salt to the food, it actually makes it kind of easier because I always, in the older game I always have to get salt. And um, the this shaker, that actually helped me out too. And I am getting better at flipping that, that crepe. I'm telling you, I can get it up two feet now and catch it sometimes. 
like one set of what, 50? Anyway, it's still a fun, silly game, which gives kids a chance to, to pretend they're cooking and actually play a solid game. And for adults, it's certainly unique. There's nothing else like it. This expansion just adds a little more of the same. Maybe 10%. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.